Quarangers. Listen while you're home. Welcome to the very first episode of Quarant Jazz. I'm Geisa Fernandes, singer and songwriter from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My very first guest, thank you very much for that, is Felix Bila. I asked Felix to tell us uh, about his work, influences, and which projects he's currently involved. And we will also have the chance to listen to one of his songs. But first things first, ladies and gentlemen, Felix Bila. Hello, my name is Felix Bila. I'm a jazz pianist and multi instrumentalist, but first and foremost, a jazz pianist. Besides working, in the jazz field, so to speak. I also perform with pop acts and work in pop music and sometimes also with choirs. Besides doing all these things that a typical musician typically does, like recording, playing gigs, etc., I'm still studying at the University of Music in Vienna and I teach a lot. I teach uh, jazz piano. I actually didn't really grow up playing and listening to a lot of jazz. I grew up in a small town in southern Bavaria called Rosenheim, which probably no one except people living in southern Bavaria or Western Europe, Central Europe actually know about. It has like 60,000 inhabitants, so it's not a very big town, but it has a lot of nice nature around it. The Alps, it's really near the Alps. Yeah, and I started to learn classical piano. I studied and learned classical piano for 15 to 16 years, a lot of time. And I listened to a lot of music, mostly based on my dad's record collection, um, as probably a lot of musicians um, did and do. They grew up on their parents' music. So I grew up mostly on Beatles, Bob Dylan, Cat Stevens, Genesis, a lot of this like 60s, 70s, 70s, 80s stuff. And I really learned to um, love it, actually. I grew up to be a big Beatles fan. I'm still to this day. At one point, I wanted to do something differently and play a bit differently. And I started to improvise a lot on the piano. Um, started to improvise on classical pieces like Mozart, Beethoven, etc. But also started to play a bit boogie and started to play all these Beatles songs that I loved. Um, that's how I actually got into jazz, I think. The improvisation part was it that got me. And the first time I got to learn this theoretical stuff, like jazz harmony, all the jazz theory, etc., was in university. So I started to more get into the theory behind jazz and behind, yeah, behind the jazz legacy, so to speak, in university. I guess it's quite difficult for every musician to describe their music. What I can do is to tell about my influences. I'm definitely influenced by classical music, that's for sure. Um, also 60s and 70s rock music, I still love this music to this day. In my youth, well I guess I'm still quite young, I'm nearly 27, I started to listen also to film music. All these different film composers from John Williams to Thomas Newman and Alexandre Desplat, etc. Um, and I'm still, I think, heavily influenced by film music when writing, composing um, or arranging things. Um, and in the jazz field, my influences are, like every pianist probably, Brad Mildow, of course. I really like a lot of trio music. I like the Neil Coley trio, I like Go Go Penguin, and especially 
EST. The first time I listened to EST, I knew, okay, I have to do this. I have to form a trio and have to go that path. EST totally blew my mind. So I guess my compositions are a blend of different styles, of different genres, of film music, classical forms, rock rhythms, of course jazz and a bit blues, but I um, would say I'm more in the European modern jazz area rather than the American jazz. And when composing I like to incorporate different techniques like allotorics for example which is mostly known through composers such as Stockhausen or John Cage. And I would say that my playing and my compositions are kind of simplistic or minimalistic. I like to have sim simple melodies. I think that's, for me, that's the most important part of a composition. A simple melody you start with a simple melody and you have interesting chord changes under it or interesting interplaying and interweaving lines, contrapuntal lines, like Bach did, for example, in his fugues or his preludes. And yeah, I think just the most important part is uh, the simple melody, a melody that anyone can hum and that remains in the head as an earworm like that you yeah a melody that you have in your head still two or three hours or i don't know a few months after that and felix you are currently based in vienna right i'm based in vienna since six years I live here since 2014. Oh my God, how the time flies. And I'm currently mostly involved in a project called Prim. It's my main project, it's a trio um, with bass, drums and piano, like a typical jazz trio. I founded the trio in 2015 and we released an album called More and Less Diminished in 2016 and an EP called 40 Days in 2017. And when the pandemic happened, um, we were in the midst of our release period and we still are in the midst of the release period of our new studio album, uh, Garnet Tales, which will be out on the 14th of May. Yeah, so it definitely sh shook us in that release period. We had to reschedule um, and modify a bit of the promo plan and we still don't know if we for example can play a release concert on the 14th of may in vienna we'll have to see also we had to cancel some shows we had to cancel a poland tour which was planned for april we were for example supposed to play at the lublin jazz festival at the end of april and even before the cancellation went through, we were concerned that it might be risky to play in front of such a big audience, that it might not be safe for the audience and us. It's a pity because we were looking forward to meet our fans in Poland and meet new people um, and have a great time there. But of course, right now, uh, their safety and yeah, the safety in, in the world actually is more important than that. And we're sure it's possible to reschedule the shows. We were also supposed to have two shows in Krakow and one in Warsaw, but they all now had to be canceled. I also had a solo concert planned in Vienna, but that of course also had to be canceled. I talked to different colleagues in Vienna and they all have this, this problem now with cancelled shows and with um, like difficult income and difficult revenue streams now. And they all have to rethink 
what they're doing right now. Um, it's like that for every every musician in the world and every musician who's struck by the current crisis. And of course, it's not only like that for musicians, it's like that for for basically everyone. Everyone has to rethink what to do, rethink activities, rethink daily routines. But on the positive side, it gives us time to start new projects, learn new things that you didn't have time before, and maybe also have a bit time for yourself and have a bit slower life. Wow, that must have been really hard, being caught right in the middle of a release. And how did you adapt your routine to these new situations? Or what's your routine now? I also reconsidered my daily plans and the plan for this time. And to be frank, no one really knows how long this um, quarantine and this virus will be around and these problems will be there. So what I'm doing, I'm recording videos. I just found the time to do that more often, which I didn't really find the time before. I'm looking more into live streaming. With a friend of mine who lives in Freiburg, um, I will start a live stream concept and starting soon actually um, on, on Instagram and yeah I'm really happy to be able to learn more in that field and in recording and in video production because I see that there is plenty to learn and plenty to know. I also started teaching my students at the music school via video call now which isn't that easy for both sides um, but we we somehow manage I started recently and it went better than I actually thought it would like via, via Skype and WhatsApp etc um, and I started transcribing a bit more and I guess I have time to compose a bit more which is also really nice and of course I have a bit more time to to practice right now I'm really into practicing um, up-tempo grooves um, also with my teacher from the uni things like McCoy Tyner improvisations etc and also of course I'm recording this podcast right now I have time to record for this podcast which I wouldn't have time for um, normally. Starting last Sunday in Austria, musicians joined together to play at uh, six o'clock p.m. to play in front of uh, their windows and play out of their windows, led by the example of the Italians, who did the same in their cities. And, which is one of the most important things, I have more time to spend with my girlfriend and with my private life. What this all showed me is that you can easily adjust and, and that we're all flexible and have resources to help others. My biggest surprise was that the teaching went really well. In the online setting, the atmosphere was really good and casual. And what I especially enjoyed was that I had to be creative with exercises and thinking about new ways of improving the situation. And I believe one way of improving it is listening to music. That's why I also brought a song that I would really like to share with you. It's a song that is of great personal importance to me and the trio. It's called 40 Days. Yes, and there's a very um, moving story concerning this song. Tell us about it. 
to understand the song, it's important to go back a few years from now to 2016. As I already have mentioned, I founded the trio in 2015, to be exact, in November 2015, and back then we were in a different lineup. On bass was Kuno Raimund Lua, a Turkish bass player who whom I met in Vienna and I'm still friends with now and Ralf Damara on drums, an Austrian drummer. So we practiced a lot initially and then played our first gigs in the trio in Vienna in that lineup and then we also released our first album. It was a really great and well-working um, constellation, this lineup. I still remember to this day the situations we had in the recording studio or when playing and the chemistry that really showed that we had between us in the, in the lineup. And because Konorai was more of an extrovert, I'm sort of in between and Ralf was always the the introvert one one in the in the whole band and he really brought something to it and unfortunately then in the three months after the release of the album he died and of course after that the the whole project the whole band just was gone at first we were on completely unsure feet. I don't know if you can say that in, in English. Yeah, we weren't sure how and, and if to actually continue. But ultimately, we thought, okay, we have to continue and we also want to continue the project for Ralph's sake. Um, and to... No, don't stop making music because... That is really important and that is also what Ralf would have wanted us to do, to not stop the project, but continue making music, continue playing gigs, continue making people happy with our music and inspire people that we actually, we hope to do with our music. It would have been not very good, not the right thing to do to just stop. So we looked for another drummer and we found an Egyptian drummer in Vienna called Sherif Abdallah. A really great drummer, also studied in Vienna. And yeah, we we started off with him and it was also it was also a good chemistry. And at one point we um, wanted to write some new songs together. And Sherif came with this tune, 40 Days. He said, he wrote a tune for Ralf because he was deeply shocked by the events around uh, Ralf's death and that Ralf died. So he wanted to write an homage, basically write, write a song for him. And that's how 40 Days came about. He, he came into the rehearsal room with the sheet music, beautiful lines written, beautiful, m beautiful melody, um, and we sat down and arranged everything. It was really nice because it was a collaborating effort of the whole band, of Konorai, of me, and of Sherif to to make an effort remembering Ralf. Sherif is a Muslim and the title 40 days has a lot to do with his own spirituality and it also has a lot to do with a lot of religions like Judaism and Christianity of course the because the number 40 as we probably all know plays a big role in a lot of these um, religions like the 40 days that Jesus had to had to spend in the desert 
And also in, in Islam, there's the saying that it takes 40 days for a soul to reach heaven. So that's what the title of the whole song is is actually about about us thinking, okay, Ralph's soul will take 40 days to to reach heaven and will ultimately reach heaven. I'm I'm not very religious myself. I'm spiritual probably, but not very religious myself, but I found that title and the the symbolism behind behind the song and behind the idea of the song very very good and very interesting and and, and we thought a deserving and wonderful tribute to Ralf. So we also decided to release a whole EP called 40 Days, with 40 Days being the title track. And this was also a very collaborating effort, as 40 Days was initially written by Sharif. I wrote a song called Elodion, and Konorai wrote a song called Back and Back. After the 40 Days EP, the lineup with Sharif and Konorai completely split up. Sharif wanted to pursue um, other projects and Konorai moved to f Florence. So here we are now in the third and hopefully final lineup where I am fortunate to play with two really exceptional and wonderful musicians. Um, Austrian musicians, Christoph Karas on drums and Martin Melzer on bass. But still to this day, the song remains a song that combines all these different lineups and the history of the trio. That's why we decided to rearrange the song and release it on our upcoming studio album and also retitle the song. It's now called 40 Days Reimagined. And and an Austrian saxophonist, the wonderful Vicky Pfeil, will will be playing on it too. And we're already excited about what everyone will think about this new arrangement. But before you can listen to the new one, we want to give you the originally envisioned track. Okay, so Felix, again, thank you very, very much for your participation, for being my first guest at Quadrant Jazz. I really enjoyed listening to your stories, getting to know you better. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 40 days.
Quarren Jazz. Listen while you're home. Quarren Jazz, a podcast by Geisa Fernandes.